This is a production of Florida State University. Hello and welcome to this May edition of FSU Headlines. I'm your host, Mark Vaughn. Thanks for joining us. Earning a college degree is no small feat, and doing it during a global pandemic is something extraordinary. And for the first time in a year, Florida State students were able to safely celebrate these achievements in person during the spring 2021 commencement ceremonies at Florida State. Take a look at the highlights of the 11 ceremonies from this spring. So we're assembled this afternoon to pay tribute to our graduates who have worked hard to earn their degrees and today will embark on new journeys. On behalf of all of us, I congratulate and wish each and every one of you great success. I'm John Thrasher, President of Florida State University, and I want to welcome you to our spring commencement exercises. There's nothing, nothing my wife, Jean, and I feel stronger about and have more joy about than seeing the students that we've come to know over the years cross the stage in their caps and gowns, having achieved their dreams of a degree from Florida State University. And after the year we've had together with the sacrifices that all of you all have made, remote learning, virtual events, social distancing, you deserve this celebration. So thank you for your resilience. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your flexibility. And most importantly, thank you for your hard work. The ceremonies for the class of 2021 will always be extra special for me, but they'll likely be the last that I preside over as president of Florida State University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Florida Board of Governors and the Florida State University Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the appropriate degree for which you have qualified. We extend to you our sincerest congratulations. You may now change your tassels from right to left. I'm reminded of the true definition of commencement. It isn't the end. It's the beginning, the start of something new. Receiving your diplomas marks the commencement of a new chapter of your lives, just as I'm about to turn the page in my life story. Congratulations, class of 2021. God bless you. Well, we had 11 ceremonies, like you said, Mark, and uh, they, each one was, was special in its own way because the kids, uh, you know, uh, really were looking forward to having a commencement, and we weren't able to do that for, for almost a year. And to have them there, have their families there, and have them walk across the, uh, the stage to, to uh, be congratulated on their degrees, it couldn't have been a more of a special moment for me and, and Florida State to do that particularly for me at this point, because it'll be the last ones I really do. But I, I, uh, I, we, we were just so proud of the graduates, so proud of uh, what they've accomplished at Florida State, and, what so, and so proud of what they uh, have done for Florida State while they were here. So we wish them the very best, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing great things out of them. Florida State also held a makeup in-person ceremony for the class of 2020 because they celebrated their graduation in a virtual setting. You can see video of that special day on news.fsu.edu. On to a big award for two acclaimed Florida State University faculty members as they are named this year's Lawton Award recipients. Florida State University's Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor Award is the highest honor the FSU faculty bestows upon one of its own. And this year, two professors shared the honor. Gary Taylor is a renowned Shakespeare scholar and Jorge Pikarowicz is a nuclear astrophysicist. Prekarowitz came to FSU in 1990 as an assistant scientist and rose through the ranks of the physics department. He's authored more than 155 publications and been cited more than 6,500 times. For Jorge, this award is a testament to his passion for preparing his students. And Gary, who arrived at FSU in 2005, has led a major transformation of the English department. 
He developed the history of text technologies and is also the chair of the English department at Florida State. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's very humbling because I do know many, many of the Latin professors. I know that they have distinguished themselves throughout their career, both as a researchers and as instructors and mentors. So being in the company of those people that I admire so much is really, really an honor. It means an enormous amount. And I'm delighted that I'm sharing it with Jorge uh, because um, although people think physics and English or physics and Shakespeare, what do they have to do with each other? Um, actually, we're both studying the past all the time because when he looks at stars, he's looking at those stars the way they were a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. I'm looking at a, mostly at writers who worked 400, 450 years ago. And yet that study of things that happened in the past um, can be transformative for, uh, for students in the present. The students have spoken and Raphael Campman has earned this year's honor of being the Florida State University Distinguished Teacher. A FAMU FSU College of Engineering faculty member, Professor Campman has now received this year's Distinguished Teacher Award. It's the university's most prestigious honor for teaching. Campman became a full-time faculty member in the FAMU FSU College of Engineering back in 2015. And he believes he has a reputation among his students for having a tough class but it's for a specific purpose in his eyes. That's what the students take away from the class is that they actually learn how to learn and learn how to jump over hurdles. So that like I purposely put them in these challenges. Some are sometimes hard, some are, you know, like borderline hard. And I hope that it's rewarding for them when they overcome these challenges and therefore find ways to not be bugged down in the future, in a sense. So I kind of purposely try to give them hard challenges so that they get used to the rigor of engineering and what the future career holds for them. You can read more about Professor Kamen and see other faculty award winners on news.fsu.edu. Well, let's take a quick look at an important signing by President John Thrasher with the help of the Student Veterans Center of Florida State University. FSU is donating building space to the Dale Mabry Army Airfield for their use. Watch this. Florida State is just honored, really honored to uh, be a part of this initiative to preserve what really is a historical part of this, not only this community, but a historical part of our country. Now, thanks to what President Thrasher has done uh, and Florida State has done, the, the walls of Building 264 uh, they still get to tell their stories. That facility played such an important role in the history of our state, uh, certainly in our country during World War II. And to be able to convey that over, that building over, which is a, such a historical building, to the folks who are managing it and, uh, and care about it, uh, we couldn't be prouder to be a part of that. So it's, it's a historical thing that should be preserved, not only for this university, but for uh, our country. So, uh, fantastic, yeah, congratulations to everybody. We're, we're very happy to be sitting here today celebrating this, this moment. Congratulations again. Thank you. Coming up next on FSU Headlines, it's a huge honor for the director of the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. Getting elected to the National Academy of Sciences is, uh, to me, a very exciting event, personally. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. We'll tell you how Greg Bobinger joins an elite group for his lifetime of work. FSU Headlines continues in just a moment. At Florida State University, we're proving that students from all walks of life can achieve at the highest levels. We're proving that intellect, creativity, service, and daring matter. We're proving the next generation can do more than dream of a better world. They can make it happen. We are Florida State University. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit. You're supporting students like us. In the lab, in the classroom, and in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSU license plate 
today. Welcome back to FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn. The National High Magnetic Field Laboratory Director, Greg Bobinger, has received a huge honor. The director of the Florida State University headquartered National High Magnetic Field Laboratory has been named a member of the National Academy of Sciences. It's a huge honor for researchers around the nation. This really is a, a, a statement of sustained uh, success in research, and that's of course what I feel my calling in life has been. So it's, it's been a very exciting week. Considered one of the highest honors a scientist can receive, Bobinger is excited to join this group. Getting elected to the National Academy of Sciences is, uh, to me, a very exciting event, personally. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. It's, um, research is a collaborative endeavor, and uh, you, you benefit from your mentors, your colleagues, the folks who you're mentoring. Um, but it's, it's so wonderful to get sort of the uh, sign from your peers, from people you respect, that, that you've done a, a good job. This is the most recent achievement of Bovinger's long list of accolades. He's also a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Physical Society, and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. But he says he didn't get here alone. I'm immensely indebted to so many hundreds of people over the past, you know, 35 years that uh, it's, it's just wonderful to reconnect with some of them via email uh, as, as um, they hear the news and we exchange emails. But, um, you know, from, from my thesis advisors through to uh, colleagues at Bell Laboratories to colleagues at the Magnet Lab, colleagues here at Florida State University, uh, just thank you. It's, 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 uh, it's, I'm humbled and, and, and just really excited by the whole prospect. You can learn more about Greg Bobinger and the Mag Lab on news.fsu.edu. Well, speaking of the Mag Lab, they have orchestrated a new agreement that's set to boost industry partnerships at Florida State. The Tallahassee-based Mag Corps and the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory, or Mag Lab as we like to call it, have inked a five-year agreement to help market science to private industries. This is a, a new and exciting era for the Magnet Lab. We've always had some of our research that has been translated into the private sector, into industry. Uh, but this is, with the launch of MagCorp, an opportunity to have uh, a company that's um, not part of the Magnet Lab, it's separate from the Magnet Lab, but a big part of their business model is to be aware of what's happening at the Magnet Lab and then also to be aware of what's out there in the private sector that could benefit from what it is that we do at the Magnet Lab. It means that uh, MagCorp will occasionally uh, contact folks at the Magnet Lab and say, we've got a company and they're interested in XYZ. Uh, do you think that there, it would get some traction at the Magnet Lab? Who should we talk to? You know, a lot of times you have a great idea in the laboratory, but you have no idea what's out there in the private sector and in the, in the economy. Uh, and MagCorp can do the legwork to go find the potential uh, partner. We think this will be one of the ways to, to show how dynamic we are in yet another direction. And for us, as a part of an educational institution like, like Florida State University, we see it as a way that our uh, students, undergraduates, graduate students, or our postdocs can see alternative career paths. You know, it, the, the majority of folks that get advanced degrees don't become professors. They go out into the economy. So any, any bridges we can build give students at all levels an opportunity to go and see where those opportunities might lie. We fundamentally at the Magnet Lab know that our research is paid for by the taxpayers. And we very much want to be able to demonstrate in every way we can that we're worth every penny and then some. And to be able to tell exciting research stories and things that might someday impact someone's life, that's one thing. But to be able to actually point to specific economic activities, specific new products, would be another thing altogether. And that's what I see as the opportunity here with MagCorp. In our next headline, we're talking about sustainability and a program designed to help Florida State students grow in their leadership and project management abilities. It's called the Sustainability Fellows Program and it's housed in the Office of Sustainable Campus at Florida State. 
Students selected for the program are mentored and reach out to campus and community partners to help solve problems. Fellows work 60 hours during the semester and they're partnered with a campus or a community partner to solve a sustainability challenge. And uh, the thing that makes fellows really special is that the projects all have an end deliverable in mind from the very beginning. So rather than you know, just showing up in an office and not really having a specific direction, fellows know exactly what the end goal is. And so their task is to figure out how to get from point A to point Z within that 60 hour time frame throughout the semester. I've learned so much from this experience. Um, I've networked with um, so many different professionals and I've learned a lot, not only more about lead, but other um, environmental issues that would impact um, those who are disadvantaged or um, people who may not have resources to just get up and like move when their um, environment is hazardous to them. And speaking of sustainable campus, this year's Chuck It for Charity resumed its task of helping students donate to local charities. They moved pickup stations from inside the residence halls to outside to safely gather tons of stuff from those residence halls on campus. Chuck It for Charity is our move out program that we run. So um, it is a program designed to take uh, items that students no longer want from their residence halls and we donate them into the community and work with over 40 different nonprofits in the Big Bend region. We serve a variety of different needs with those different organizations. Um, and how it works is simply that students, as they're moving out, if they decide they do not want an item, they can just drop it off to us at one of our stations and then we will take it back to our warehouse and then donate it the following week to the different organizations that we work with. You can learn more about both of these programs at sustainablecampus.fsu.edu. Coming up next on FSU Headlines, we find out how the College of Nursing is helping its students thrive. So we started the Buddy Program in partnership with the Leon County Senior Center to pair nursing students and seniors in the community at the start of the pandemic. We'll have that story when we return. Welcome back to FSU Headlines, I'm Mark Vaughn. Now to a story in the College of Nursing, where they're teaming up with the local senior center to help prevent loneliness and solitude through the college's new buddy program. Reporter Abby Gerald has the story. The recent pandemic is often described as lonely, isolating, and uncertain, but the Florida State College of Nursing has found a way to add some positive light to our current circumstances. So we started the Buddy Program in partnership with the Leon County Senior Center to pair nursing students and seniors in the community at the start of the pandemic. And we took individuals who were already lonely and isolated and made them even more lonely and isolated. So as we started talking to figure out ways to continue to engage community members, that's where the birth of the Buddy Program came. Through these times of solitude, Florida State nursing students have received nothing but praise from their senior buddies. The seniors have loved their interaction with their buddies. We have folks who say they feel like they've met their soulmate. We have senior participants who want to adopt their buddies. Everyone is basically in love with their, their nursing student buddy. They look forward to the buddies calls. It's like the highlight of their week. I enjoy having a partner, her name is Melissa. It's uh, giving me um, entertainment and companionship and um, it's nice. She's always there for me and we chat at least once a week. For these nursing students, the feeling is definitely mutual. Being able to talk to her and like force this relationship, kind of come out of my shell a little bit, just help me like build my communication skills. I'm really glad that the College of Nursing um, here at the Senior Center for this. This program is also helping both seniors and students gain knowledge and meaningful skills that they will carry on past the pandemic. It's a chance for them to share their wisdom with the nursing students, to share the needs of older adults in terms of interacting with the medical community, it gives them a chance to mentor a nursing student. She's been a big help. You know, we, we started clinicals this semester, so it's been my first like experience in a real patient care setting. So. Um, Talking to her and becoming familiar with her and getting to know her has really like helped me. From the Senior Center, 
To the College of Nursing, this program cannot be recommended highly enough by its participants. It's a great resource and I will keep recommending it to anybody I know. When I go to Publix and I use a scooter, I will sometimes leave a flyer in the basket for anybody else who might want to join in. Something that we've all really learned from COVID is that we can all like use someone um, to have like a relationship with and like build and flourish that and I think all of us have been like really seeking that, you know, human to human contact. Students and seniors alike hope these new relationships will last well beyond the buddy program. I really wanted to like form a relationship and a bond with her and I do hope that like once I graduate um, that we are able to maintain that relationship and hopefully we'll like meet in person. Oh, she knows how I feel about her and I will send her a text message this evening when I get home. Forever friendships and shared wisdom will continue to emerge from Florida State's successful buddy program through genuine conversations and unbreakable bonds. I'm Abby Gerald reporting. In our next headline, we look at new residential housing on campus that's here to include everyone. I mean, ultimately college is about, you know, self-discovery and growth and education. And if you don't feel comfortable and safe in the place that's supposed to feel like your home, like where you go to relax, like it doesn't facilitate effective education. Florida State University will now be offering gender inclusive housing to its residential students to create a more welcoming and inclusive living experience. We have an option that's called the LGBTQ Ally Housing. That's going to allow students to be able to choose or select someone to live with regardless of their gender identity at the university. So the LGBTQ plus Ally Housing is an opportunity for students that either identify as LGBTQ um, or allies to live together. Um, in community, whether it's in our apartment style or traditional style housing. Members of the LGBTQ plus community believe this new housing option is vital for the university's future. It's obviously going to create some tension if you are assigned based on your sex and not your gender identity. It can lead to tension and even dangerous situations and so I think with this option it, you know, creates a safer, less intimidating space. For me personally, it really hit home because when I came during my summer C session, like my first semester, I was like housed with a really like homophobic person and just queer phobic overall. Like for example, one of my friends during their freshman year, um, they were encountered with a very homophobic and racist roommate to the point where like they were called names on the daily. It was just not an inclusive space. I'm gay and one thing that sort of crosses the back of your mind is like, what if I end up with someone who does not quite agree with, you know, who I am? With this option, it sort of starts to tackle those challenges. For members of the LGBTQ plus community who may not be fully comfortable with their sexuality, it can be difficult for them to express who they are. We hope to have more students that are able to live with us because we can meet their need without having to identify any kind of a particular information about themselves they're not ready to talk about. Can I apply without letting my parents know because we know a lot of students that identify LGBTQ, um, some haven't told their parents yet. Florida State University listens and is implementing change where change was needed. I'm just excited that there's going to be an option other than getting a random roommate and hoping for the best. Oh, it's been so exciting. We've wanted to do this for a while. We just had to work through it. When you try to change a culture or a process on campus, it takes a while. You have to get buy-in. You have to make sure everyone feels good about where we're going. Having inclusive housing really helps to build a community within our community, if that makes sense, as well as having a safe space. I have a lot of hope because if it couldn't be me, it's gonna be the younger generation. And that's okay because I was a part of the fight to see that happen for all the incoming people. This is one of the many reasons I'm proud to call myself a Seminole. I think it reaffirms Florida State's values. I mean, what they mean when they want to support students, um, how they support students in all aspects of their life. I think it's just a really exciting and huge like leap in the right direction. I'm Nairi Skindarian, reporting. 
And finally, in this edition of FSU Headlines, we head out to Landis Green for the annual President's Ice Cream Social Event, where students got to enjoy ice cream, of course, and also meet and greet with President Thrasher. That's it for this edition of FSU Headlines. Remember, you can always keep up with Florida State University news online at news.fsu.edu. For everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Mark Vaughn. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.